Welcome back everyone. Hi, if you're new, my name is Tori and today I'm going to be sharing with you guys some fall recommendations. It is so weird that we are back here again where I am sharing seasonal recommendations, cozy fall reads, like time is not real. I'm really excited for this video. A lot of these books have been mentioned across my channel before, but they've never been in one recommendations video together. And there are also a couple of reads on here that are brand new recommendations for me and one that I'm still currently reading. Actually, by the time this video goes up, I might be finished with it, but I'm loving this book so much and I'm almost done with it that I just think it's perfect for this time of year and I needed to share it with you guys. So we're going to get into all of that. I feel like I have a good mix of books here that might appeal to what you might be looking for this season, whether you're looking for like a cozier science fiction tome to curl up with now that the weather is getting cooler or you're more in a mystery mood or you want something that's purely atmospheric but also still has some of those dark uh, vibes and themes that you might, you know, that we typically find this time of year. So yeah, we are going to get into all of that. Again, I have nine books to share, so let's get started. So the first book I want to talk about is my current read. This is, you guys, this is so good. I'm loving this book so much. It is seriously one of my favorite books so far that I've read in 2021. And that is My Soul to Keep by Tanana Reeve Du. I'm almost finished with this. And like I mentioned, it might be, you know, this might be done by the time this video goes up, but this is so, this is so good. So in this, we're following this married couple, Jessica, who is a journalist, and then Jessica's husband, David, whose name is actually DeWitt. And DeWitt, is an immortal. One thing that I love about this book, even though DeWitt is an immortal, he's not any kind of creature, like he's not a vampire, that sort of thing. He's just human and he's made that clear like so many times that he is just a man who has been plagued with immortality and really the whole book is this deep and really rich character driven story about his struggle with that so we're getting a lot of history when we're in DeWitt's like third person perspective he's I mean he's been a slave he's seen jazz come into being he's traveled all around the world he's died several times and he's fallen in love he's had other families and so we're really seeing the history of you know all of that through his eyes and just how painful a lot of those losses have been and so I'm at the point now where we're getting into a situation where DeWitt really has to make a decision whether he wants to leave his family or do something drastic in order to keep them with him forever so there is just a lot happening here and if he risks you know bringing them into his kind of immortal world he'll break the covenant he'll betray the trust of his life brothers there's just there's a lot there's some really great world building happening outside of our normal like Miami setting in this book I love it I love it so much. I'm really loving DeWitt's character and a lot of the history that we're getting in this. So I think if you're looking for something that is just a slow burner for the season, something that feels a little bit cozier, but also this book has some dark elements in it as well, I think you should definitely go pick this up. This is seriously one of my favorite reads that I've read so far this year, so highly highly recommend this. So that's it for my current reads. Now all of these are books that I have finished. The next book I want to talk about is Feed by Mira Grant, also known as Shauna McGuire. And I feel like Shauna McGuire and I, we are really, we're really vibing right now because I read Every Heart of Doorway a while back and I did not like that novella at all. And after when I finished that novella, I was like, I'm never going to read anything else by Shauna McGuire, Mira Grant. Like, you know, I'm kind of, I'm done with that. So to go from that to Feed to the other Shauna McGuire recommendation that I have on this list. Like we have come, we've come a long way. So Feed is a post-apocalyptic zombie novel. I love this story for a lot of the same reasons that I love The Girl With All The Gifts by M.R. Carey. And that book almost made this list, but I feel like I've been talking about The Girl With All The Gifts way too much lately. So I was like, that might be overkill. But I love that book because it does subvert a lot of the tropes that I think we're used to seeing in post-apocalyptic um, literature and zombie, especially like zombie uh, fiction. First of all, I don't know when I became so interested in zombie fiction. One of my favorite shows of all time is The Walking Dead. I watch it on Netflix every single day. I still watch, you know, when the new episodes premiere, I love The Walking Dead. But I've never really been into zombie fiction until maybe a couple of years years ago and it's just it is so good so if you have any good zombie recommendations like I'm not joking drop them in the comments but feed is so good in the way that the girl with all the gifts is because it also knows how to kind of turn those zombie tropes and those post-apocalyptic tropes on its head so feed takes place in a world where we have found a cure for the common cold and cancer but in doing that this also resulted in this new virus called the Kellis Amberley virus which turns people into zombies and back in 2014 this led to something called the rising so feed takes place 
decades after the rising happened and we're following these bloggers georgia and sean mason as they are chronicling the presidential campaign for this senator it's just it's so good it was entertaining and this is the first in a series or a trilogy so i do look forward to picking up the other two the next book i'm recommending is none other than ring shout by pj lee clark this is also one of my favorite books that i've read so far in 2021 you guys already know i am a huge fan of pj lee clark's work but of everything that i've read ring shout is just this is excellent. If you have not put this on your TBR already, if you haven't read this already, I highly, highly recommend that you do so, especially this season. So in this, we're following our main character, Maurice, who hunts down Ku Kluxes. And Ku Kluxes are demons that inhabit the bodies of KKK members. And Maurice can see these demons inside their bodies. And so Maurice and her group of friends, they go out, they hunt them down, and it's just, it is so good. Just the way that P. Jelly Clark spins this history and presents it in this just fascinating um, way is something that I have never never seen before ever read before this is this is phenomenal i've said this so many times before but ring shout is just honestly the perfect example of a novella that is completely fleshed out from beginning to end world building that is incredible characters that have depth are memorable and the writing style is just so it is amazing p jelly clark has such a just the strong command of storytelling and language and character this is a p jelly clark stan channel <laughs> i would read anything that he writes at this point he is an autobi author for me so if you have not read this already then i just highly recommend you do so i read this book earlier in the year and since then i have listened to the audiobook version this is not a spoiler there is a character in ring shout that sings a lot of their lines to our main character Maurice and just reading that you don't really you know have a tune in your head or anything but the woman who's narrating it I mean she was singing those lines that the character was singing in the book and I mean just instant chills goosebumps it was an incredible incredible performance one of my favorite audiobook experiences that I've ever had so definitely go physically read ring shot if you can listen to the audiobook version of if you can do both at the same time if you can it's just it's an all-around excellent time the next book i want to talk about is one that i read last year but it's never been in a recommendations video before and that is the year of the witching by alexis henderson this was really good i've mentioned this before but alexis henderson just so expertly crafted this creepy dark environment that i think lingers throughout the entire story so even if there's not really anything to you know a particularly dark scene happening you still kind of in the back of your mind feel just kind of off and that things are just really eerie and kind of creepy the atmosphere in this is just so spot on for this time of year and we're following this young girl emmanuel who lives in this really rigid puritanical society where people really look to this leader known as the prophet and so the prophet and his other leaders they don't value the women in the community and so emmanuel she really finds comfort going in the woods behind their community and it's there that she is approached by these three witches and they give emmanuel a journal that her mother had a long time ago and as soon as emmanuel starts reading the you know the things from her mother's journal everything in this community just starts to get extremely dark and these plagues start happening blood just starts coming up everywhere i mean it is just it is a lot going on in here and i mean from there that feeling of unease while you're reading just kind of goes throughout the entire story i think this is fantastic for the fall season for october as we get closer to halloween like this is this is a must read the next book i want to recommend is a sci-fi mystery and that is six wakes by Mert lafferty so this is set in a world where clones are very much a thing there's an entire like code of ethics that clones have to follow and in this world when someone dies they have a mind map and their mind map is placed onto a clone when that clone awakens and then when that clone dies the mind map goes to the next clone when they awaken and so on and so forth and so the story starts when this crew on this generational spaceship they wake up and they discover that their previous clones have been murdered but the catch is when the clones wake up they're supposed to have the mind map or the memories from the previous clone that died but this crew when they wake up the memories are blank they don't have any idea what happened and our story really goes from there so the whole time like the crew they're kind of suspicious of each other you're trying to figure out which one of them might be capable of murder and I just I really enjoyed this the book rotates through the perspective of the crewmates and we also get their backstories before they got onto this ship called the Dormir and so most of them do have criminal pasts that led to them being on this ship and so that also adds an element of paranoia because you know you know some of them might be capable of murder and also the world building is just really solid in this as well so I think if you 
are interested in picking this up or this has been on your radar for a while, this will be a good time to dive into this. The next book I want to talk about is City of Savages by Lee Kelly. I love this book so much. I do recommend this with caution though because I know everyone's not going to like this. It's kind of angsty, a little bit cheesy in some places, but this book really, really worked for me. Just the cold atmosphere of New York City, the bond between these two sisters. I love this book so much. So this is also a post-apocalyptic novel. You see a theme here. In this we're following two sisters who live in this like closed off makeshift camp in Manhattan after you know years after the war happened and the two of them they're so different and they stumble upon their mother's uh, journal entries from you know back when the world was just starting to collapse and it's like almost like the two of them start to bond over reading their mother's letters and just their whole world kind of changes though when this outsider comes into their camp uh, to share some news and we just we really go from there that's really like the basics of this story but I just I love the relationship between these two siblings. I love the cold atmosphere of New York City. This just feels like such a cozy fall read in my opinion. So I love this book. So I am going to throw it out there like just in case this might appeal to somebody else. But you know, this is again, this is not going to work for everybody. So don't read this and be like, I hate this book. Like I told you, I told you you might not like it. The next book is also one of my favorites that I have mentioned a few times, but I've never put in a recommendations video before. So here it is making its recommendations debut, or at least I think it is. I don't know. <laughs> but that is Do You Dream of Terror 2 by Temi O. Oh. You guys look at how like raggedy my hardcover is getting. I am just still so in love with this book and these characters, the story just still has such a special place in my heart. I love this book so much. I think if you are looking for a slow burner, cozy, light science fiction story, you are really going to enjoy this. In this, we are following this crew of teenage astronauts and they have been training their whole lives for this journey to travel to this Earth-like planet known as Terra 2 in order to find humanity a new home. So these teenagers are not actually on the journey by themselves. There are like very experienced adult astronauts on the ship with them, but the story is really focused on these teenagers and the story moves through their different perspectives as they're on this 20 year long journey and reading this you just kind of feel them in this claustrophobic space learning how to mentally handle this journey that's ahead of them they're also grieving losses from back home before they even left earth they're, they left a lot of their problems on earth that are still you know sticking with them now that they're in the spaceship so you're just kind of getting all of that and their struggles with depression and mental health and emotions and you're kind of getting all that in this like really cramped space and it makes you the reader feel well it made me the reader feel like very claustrophobic while I was reading this but also it gave me something to root for with these characters and uh, I, I just love them I love their stories I love the way that they interact with each other in this book and just even the way that the adults kind of give them like the space to figure things out I love the story so much and I still think about the ending it's just it's so good so good so if you have yet to read this if you're looking for a larger book to kind of sink into this season do you dream of terror 2 is definitely that book so the next book i want to talk about you guys is a recent read for me this is the first time i am mentioning this book on my channel i love this book so much it is also one of my favorite reads of 2021 so far something could knock it out the best of the year spot but middle game by Shauna McGuire. This was so good. Oh my god. Look, I marked this up. You guys know I'm into my book darts. Marked it up. I don't even know where to start. This is amazing. I guess it's labeled as fantasy, so we'll go with that. So there is a lot happening in Middle Game. This is actually a little difficult to discuss because there's so much happening in here, but we have these alchemists and they have essentially figured out a way to embody the doctrine of ethos, specifically math, and language and so in this we're following siblings dodger and roger dodger is the math genius roger is really into languages and words and the two of them were created by these alchemists to embody those two branches of the doctrine of ethos and the two of them they're separated when they're really young across you know different sides of the country and they find out that they have this special connection that lets them communicate with each other and we're following the two of them from when they're really young like through the years up until they're almost like or just about 30 years old and the ways that they just come together and fall apart and find their ways back to each other all the while 
basically the world is at stake <laughs> so it is just oh my god this is it's so good and the alchemists in the story are trying to keep these two apart until the time is right i wouldn't say this is like dark academia per se but i think if you're looking for something with those kind of darker vibes and you know study of languages and math you would really really enjoy you know something like this and just how deep shauna mcguire starts to explore those different uh, branches of study in this story is just so it's so good I love Roger and Dodger so much their sibling dynamic is so good it's so strong and just I just want them to be happy that's it I want them to be happy the alchemists in here that are watching over them they have a really great dynamic like the conversations that they have with each other are just it's great I love this I completely lost myself in this story I think this is really really perfect for the fall season and like just this time of year in general so this is fantastic this is also going to be in my what month is this my September wrap-up so be on the lookout for that but oh my god this is good and then finally the last book that I want to talk about is no surprise this is just on here because at this point it is just my yearly fall recommendation and that's night film if you haven't read it yet I mean <laughs> October is quite literally the month where you should probably do that because it's set in New York City in October. You're just gonna get those cool crisp fall vibes, those dark vibes. It, this is one of my favorite books. This story is just so wild. We are following this journalist who is obsessed with this filmmaker named Cordova. And Cordova's movies, they are iconic, but they are so dark that movie theaters refuse to show them. So instead, Cordova's fans have taken to showing them underground, like at these red band screenings on these different forums. They come together and communicate and talk about, you know, the films and the dark themes in the films. And I mean, this filmmaker has a serious cult following and the director himself is a recluse so that it makes his films even more mysterious and like the ideas behind his films even darker and our main character who's a journalist just becomes completely obsessed with this director when it's found out that the director's daughter Ashley was found dead in a warehouse in New York City and I mean the levels of obsession and detective work that go into trying to find out what actually happened to Ashley it is just it is it's a lot we have news articles in here about Cordova's films and about Ashley's childhood this is amazing I would love I keep saying this I would love to see this turn into a movie but only if it has the right director but like I said this is incredible if you have not read it yet highly highly recommend i recommend this book every single year literally for the exact same video so that's why it's at the end but ugh, this is so good so that is it for me you guys thank you all so much for watching this video i really appreciate it let me know down in the comments what is on your tbr for the fall season if you're going to pick up any of these recommendations and i will see you guys in the next video take care